Very Working cool. with the same way of, uh, is very, very important uh, in our syllabus. So I want us to check what we have actually from these questions uh, on, on the sine wave, which is the application of the AC theory. All right, we've got the first part of our question, which is 3.1, where we are given to study the sine wave below. So we need to understand what this sine wave actually represent. From the graph of a sign that we talk about in our mathematics, remember that we say a complete cycle is the one that is being taken from zero up to 360 degrees like this. So there we are talking about a complete cycle being uh, taken from our sine wave. From 360 degrees, if we are to move another 360 degrees, if we add, that means we are going to end up at uh, 720 degrees. We have another complete cycle. So meaning to say the cycles that we are talking about here, there are two. If we take another cycle again, which is going to be a complete cycle, we add 720 plus 360 and so on. So uh, having this in mind, it tells us from zero to 360, if we are saying this is a complete cycle, a complete cycle uh, uh, is going to affect the two things are uh, here. We are going to have the maximum value from the first half of the cycle, because this is our first cycle, this one. So meaning to say between this, we've got zero at this point corresponding, we've got 90 degrees, we've got 180 degrees here, uh, we've got 270 degrees and so on up to 360. So considering this from zero to 180, this part here, it is representing half of our cycle in this case from zero to 180, this one, it's half of a cycle. Then we have got another half that is taken from 180 to 360 to complete this cycle. So at the peak here, this is the part, first part that we must understand. This is the peak that we are having, like the maximum value that we are having on the first half, the, which corresponds so this one that you are obtaining when it is a minimum value. So we've got a maximum value at the top, then we've got a minimum uh, value uh, on the bottom. In this case, we are going to talk about the minimum value. All right, so talking of from zero to 360, we can say we have completed a cycle within a certain time frame. So we are saying half of this cycle is happening at uh, 180 degrees then a complete cycle is completed at uh, 360 degrees. That's a complete cycle in this case. All right, then there's something that you also ought to understand, uh, like the time that might be taken and some of the other things, we shall see them on the questions that the time is one of a frequency a sine wave. Always you're going to work with the frequency depending with what you're given. And this time is given in seconds which is the opposite. Also, if you want to calculate the frequency, it is going to be one over the time. And our frequency is measured in a hertz in this case. All right, so uh, our frequency measured in what? In hertz. So meaning to say that from this part, we can be able to attempt some of these questions. I'm going to explain. Uh, this is the mark allocation and so forth. All right, so we are given from this diagram that we have been talking about the first part calculate each of the following 3.11, the peak to peak value. Remember I was talking about the peak here to say, this is our peak value, this is our other peak, which is in the minimum. So this is the maximum peak, the minimum peak value. So when you're talking about the uh, peak to peak value, we can use the formula two times the maximum value. So this one can be two times the maximum value, or you can use this as the peak to peak value as the maximum value minus uh, the minimum value. All right, so if we are to use this formula, it is going to be two times our maximum value uh, from this part is what is 24. This is the maximum value uh, voltage, which is 24 volts. So you're gonna multiply, which is going to give us 48 uh, volts in this case. If we use maximum minus minimum, it means we are going to obtain uh, in this case, the maximum, remember, is positive 24 minus the minimum value here, the minimum value, which is corresponding as negative 24. So it will be minus uh, 24. So there's a minus for the formula, but the 24 that we are having is also carrying a negative 
So at the end, it will be a positive, which is going to give us uh, 40, 80 volts in this case. All right, so that is how you calculate your uh, peak to peak value. Then we are given 3.12 uh, now to calculate the RMS value and the average value. All right, so I'm going to explain these two here uh, in terms of formulas 3.12. Uh, the first one is the RMS value. In order for you to calculate the RMS value, you're also given on your formula sheet. So it is going to depend with the, the RMS value is which one, is it for voltage or is it for current? But each value for RMS value, it is going to be uh, 0, uh, 0,707 times the value that corresponds times the maximum uh, value in this case. So in this case, which values are we talking about? We are talking about the voltage. This is what we are given. So the RMS value is supposed to be from the voltage. So we are going to use this as uh, the RMS value for voltage in this case, which is the EMF. So you can write this as E, RMS, e RMS is going to be 0, 0,707. You are given this formula in your formula sheet times the maximum value. Since we are talking about voltage, so this is going to be E max. We are going to be talking about the maximum voltage, which is our maximum voltage. Remember our maximum voltage uh, here is what is two is 24. So that is how we can have, okay. So here it's supposed to be E max, not just two, two times max, two times E max. Can you just correct this formula? E max or V max. So it's gonna be two times V max or E max for, for, for peak to peak value. I'm seeing that I forgot the E there. All right, so you're gonna write 0, 0,707 times the E max, which is uh, 24, or you can take it from your diagram. That was 24 volts, which is a positive. So if you are to multiply this on your calculator, guys, you are going to obtain something like 16, uh, 968 uh, volts in this case. So you take the value in terms of what you're given. But uh, this is not the only question. The other part of the question and the average value, also the formula for the average value, you are given on your formula sheet. So the average value, uh, so this one is a continuation from the same item. So you can write as E average or V average. I don't know how you're gonna write it here. I'm going to write as E average is 0, 0.637 times E max. So if you are using the voltages, like I said, you have this also in your formula sheet. So that will be 0, 0.637 times the maximum voltage of which our Emax is not changing is still 24. So you're gonna multiply it to 24. So this will give us uh, 15,288 volts. All right, so that is how you can calculate your average value. If it is current, you're going to multiply 0, 0,637 times maximum current. You use what you are given. Here we are given voltages. All right, then we've got the other part, three point. Um, one three the frequency of the wave so if we are to consider the frequency remember from these formulas i said the frequency can be taken let me just add, attempt it on this space so this is 3.13 i said the frequency can be taken as one over the time so this is one over the time uh frame that you are given and we are given the time frame within a complete it must be taken from a complete cycle always you use a complete cycle and on this complete cycle that we are given this is the time frame that we are given of uh, two milliseconds so we're given our time as uh, two milliseconds so meaning to say our answer is going to be one over two milliseconds remember milli that's times 10 to the exponent of minus three so we are going to obtain our frequency in this case so if you divide on your calculator this was going to give you 500 and like I said, frequency is measured in uh, hertz. So that was our question 3.13. Just use the free, the time to calculate the frequency. Then we are asked on the other part, 3.14, the crest and the form vectors. So these are also one of the most important uh, figures that you are supposed to be able to calculate uh, the crest and um, the form factor values. All right, so let us start with the form factor. Let me just use this space here. All right, so 
when you are calculating the crest value, also you are given this uh, formula, which is the crest vector. Uh, you are also given this formula. It is given as the maximum value. So you use the formula maximum value over the RMS value. So that is the idea there. It is the maximum value over the RMS value. So using what you are given, in this case, we are given in terms of voltages. So we are going to use Emax, which is our maximum value, over the RMS value, which is going to be E RMS. So we calculated, or oh, we have these Emax, we have our Emax, remember it was 24 all along our Emax 24. So we have this one. So it's going to be 24 over E RMS. We calculated the RMS value here. Remember, this was our ERMS, which gave us 16.968. So this one is just the use of the use of formulas, guys. And you have this formula. So you said this one was 16, 16,968. All right. So this is what you're going to have. You're going to obtain something like uh, 1,414, something like that to three decimal places. All right, so this is our crest factor. Then if we check on the other hand, we have got the form factor on the other hand, there is a form factor there. So the form factor also is taken from a formula and we have this formula in your formula sheet, which states that the form factor this time is the RMS value. So is the RMS value over the average value, you use average values and you have this in your formula sheet. What is our RMS value? We are talking about E RMS, the one that we calculated. What is our average value? We're talking about E average, all right? So we have E RMS, what is our E RMS here? Uh, e RMS, this one that we obtained 16.968. So we are going to use this value. Uh, 16.968 divided to the average value. The average value, we have our average value here, 15.288. So we're going to divide 15.288. So this will give you the form factor, uh, which was going to be 1,110035, which is going to be 1,11. So these are factors like constants. So it's, you don't have... Uh, uh, units that we are going to apply. So these are the typical questions, as you can see. Let us check how they can ask same or similar questions uh, like this one that we are given on this other type uh, on this question. But here it's uh, question four, but just that there are some things that have been added there. All right, there they gave us that an alternating current uh, waveform. So they gave us a waveform is a peak to peak value of 240 volts. So take note, there we've got a peak to peak value. This is the one that we are given. So our peak to peak value, remember how you got the peak to peak value. So they say the peak to peak to value uh, is 240 uh, volts in this case. Remember, this is the one that we got from two times V max or E max. Uh, if you still remember where we got this one from or where we said we're gonna use E max minus E minimum, uh, remember how we got this one. So this is what we are given the peak to peak value. And uh, it is of a sine wave and 4.1 calculate the maximum or peak or the peak value of the voltage. Now they want you to calculate the maximum value from the peak to peak value. So you just substitute into your formula. So this is 4.1. Remember we said peak to peak value, we got it from two times V max. So meaning to say 240 which is our peak to peak value is equal to two V max or E max. So let me just use V max so that we just know that is one and the same thing. So dividing by two, we are going to obtain our V max in this case, which is going to be 120 volts. So it means this sine wave was actually like this, going from zero to 120, a complete cycle. This was like this, our maximum value at 120 volts and the minimum value at minus 120 volts, completing a cycle at 360 degrees. That is our sine wave, all right? So now they are saying, let us see the other part. Uh, 
the average and RIMS values, as you can see, we are, it's a repetition here. We talked about these average values, RIMS values. Okay, anyways, let us just see how we're going to have this. So this is 4.2. So we are going to start with average value. Remember I said the average value can be taken from 0 0.637 times the maximum value, which is Vmax or Emax, whatever that you want. So 637 times Vmax we now have. So you see, if this value is wrong, everything now will be wrong, all right? So take note of the first one. So we multiply to 120, you are going to obtain uh, 76,44 volts. All right, and uh, the RMS value, we said we can take the RMS value from 0 0.707 uh, times uh, Vmax. So we're gonna have 0 0.707 times. We have the maximum value of 120 degrees. So we're gonna multiply uh, that to be 84.84 volts, all right? So that is how we could have calculated our RMS and average value, the repetition, this one. Then uh, 4.3, the form and the crest factors also is a repetition. I want us to focus on 4.4. So let us just see this one quickly. Uh, 4.3, all right, so let me just, that we see all the values here. So 4.3, they need the crest and the form factors in this case. All right, and we talked about these formulas. We say the crest vector is going to be equivalent to the maximum value over RMS value. So we say that's maximum value over the RMS value. So our values in this case, the maximum value we're talking about Vmax here, of which our Vmax is 120 uh, volts over the RMS value. We calculated our RMS value here. That was 84,84. All right, so if you divide, that will be 1,414, 1,414, something like that. All right, then we talked also of the form factor from the same information we said our form factor can be given as the RMS value. So remember this one is taken from the RMS value over the average value. So this one is over the average value. So meaning to say, we are talking about VRMS, V average of which we've got VRMS here, 84,84 over the average value. We calculated our average value 76,44. So that means we are going to obtain our form factor, which is 1,10989 and so on. So this will be 1,2. If you round off this one, will change. Uh, that will be 1, 1,1. Okay, 1, comma, I don't know. Uh, let me just confirm with my calculator here. I don't know if this is the exact value that I got here. So let's let's divide 84,84. Uh, divided to 76, that are gonna be 76,44, like this. So this will be one comma, all right, so this will change. So it will be one, one, one comma, one, one. All right, so that will be a one, one in this case, all right? Because we have got this zero changing, this one eight and so forth, all right. So that is how we're supposed to have uh, this question, uh, the form factor. Let us check the most important part, the one that is extending from the information that we had, which is one point, uh, which is 4.4. They are saying the equation for a certain alternating wave is given by not this one that we do. It's another alternating wave. It's another sine wave, not this one. So we have got, we are given its equation. Let me remove everything so that we write it here. So we are given that this equation is given as E is equivalent to 40 sine 628T. What does this part mean? It means E is equivalent to the maximum value. So this is E max, the sine of omega T. So this is what we call omega which is represented by two pi f. So it can be two pi f in place of omega. You write, it represents two pi f. All right, so there is frequency there. There is a uh, time at the end that is multiplying everything. So this one, 
Uh, it's not important, but I just wanted to know what this omega means. So omega is equal to two pi, two pi f. They can even ask you uh, in paper, uh, like a, a certain question, like what is it that the formula, you just need to understand that one, okay? So here they are saying on our question, let's understand our question. Calculate the instantaneous value of the voltage three milliseconds after zero, after the time of zero meaning to say the time, the change in time is going to be three minus zero, which is three uh, milliseconds. So we are supposed to change to, to substitute our time, this one. But what you need to understand is that this part that you see here, it's a radian concept, the pi that we see here. If, remember, omega is measured in a rad per second. So it means this whole part here, it has the rad, in, meaning to say your calculator must be in a radians once you use this as it is. So I'm going to explain E is equal to 40 sine 620 times 628 times T, your T, which is three milliseconds. You substitute uh, three milliseconds, which is three times 10 to the exponent of negative three, remember, in milliseconds. So what you're going to do is that you're going to use your calculator in a radians if you use, if you decide uh, not to change this part. So I want to explain uh, this and I will explain the other way in degrees, all right. So here I have to change the mode of my calculator to the radians for, that is for the radians. Now there's R here to mean my calculator is now in radians. So I'm going to uh, use this as it is. So it's 40 sine, uh, that will be 628 times three times 10 to the exponent of uh, negative three like this. Uh, having this in radians, we are going to obtain 38.05 uh, to something like uh, that, all right? So that's 34.054, uh, all right? So this will be 38.054, something like that, all right? This is being uh, taken or being measured in radians if we are to use our calculator in radians. But let's say I don't want to, to change my calculator to radians. I want to use it as it is in degrees. What are you going to do? You can use this as you can substitute this in degrees, all right? So like I said, this one is for radians. If you want to maintain the degrees on your calculator, you are going to use this uh, formula. Wherever there is a radian, you are going to multiply by 57,3 degrees. The moment you multiply by 57,3, you're converting to radians from the uh, 180. Remember, we say pi is equal to 180 degrees. So if we are talking about anything, uh, we are going to divide 180 divided by pi times whatever that you want to convert to, to, to degrees. So meaning to say, if you check on your calculator, let me do this way on your calculator so that you can uh, see what I'm saying. So this time we're gonna have our calculator back to degrees, which is on three there. So what I'm saying is that if you divide like this 180 divided by pi like this, what do you obtain? 57 comma, uh, this one, which is gonna be a three. This is the one they are saying multiply with. So uh, in actual sense, we are supposed to multiply by 180 degrees over pi. This one is the same as multiplying by 180 degrees over pi. So it's either you're going to choose this or you're going to choose this. All right, so this is what I'm trying to say. We are going to have our E as 40 sine, uh, the 628 that we had. So it is gonna be 628 times the three milliseconds, the one that we had three times 10 to the exponent of minus three. But this whole part now, you have to multiply it by either 180 over pi or 57,3. So you're going to choose uh, which one is uh, best for you. So if you wanted, you could have written uh, this as 180 degrees over pi, this one. You can use this in place of what? In place of 57,3. So let's see what you're going to have on our calculator. So we are going to have 40. So now our calculator is in degrees. You have to, if you use this, your calculator must be in degrees. So it's now 40 sine uh, 628. So this is 628 times three 
times 10 to the exponent of uh, negative three times 57 comma three like this. All right, so this is what you're gonna have, uh, 38.052, okay? So if you check now, if we used uh, 180 over pi, let's say we used 180 over pi, 180 over pi like this, you are going to see that we are going to obtain the exact answer as the first one, 38.054, are you seeing that one? So this one, because it is a rounded figure that we are using, we are going to obtain uh, 38.052 uh, as we saw there in, uh, these are volts in volts. But if we are to use 180 over pi in place of this, our E is going to give us the exact E as the previous one, 38. 0.054 volts because this one it's a direct sub this is the exact value or the exact substitution that is supposed to uh that is supposed to happen this one is a rounded figure we have to round off from that value that i i i, I showed you of uh, 180 uh divided by pi it's a rounded figure, so you won't obtain the exact thing. 57,29, we round now, it's 57,3. So that's why you see your value is slightly elite from the exact answer. This is the exact answer because here there is no rounding off. You substitute everything as it is. So this is the exact answer, which is the same as this one that you obtain when it's, when it's 180 over pi because there you are using exact values. All right, guys, uh, these are the typical questions. Uh, let's use this to prepare for our exams uh, because they might give us any question pertaining a sine wave or the use of a sine wave on our AC theory. We are supposed to work with this uh, and also to know your substitution part and uh, to understand basic properties of a sine wave. Like I was explaining, from the first diagram that we had, what is a cycle? Uh, what is it that you expect to know about a cycle, the peak value, uh, which is the maximum value and the minimum value and how to calculate everything from peak to peak value uh, up to these uh, uh, factors, the crest and the form factors. It's very, very important before your exams.